All right, so hopefully we've got those postulates copied into our notes. And in geometry, a rule that's accepted without proof is called an axiom or what? A postulate. Okay, so those are just things that we're going to have to accept. They're just a given. So the first one that they've given us is called the ruler postulate. And the ruler postulate says that the points on a line can be matched one to one with coordinates and they can be assigned values. We can talk about the coordinates of the points and, and the distance between them. And remind me, I've been talking about this for a couple of days now, when I draw this, how is that red? What does the symbol above it mean? Line AB, right? When I draw this, what does that mean? segment AB, right? And when I draw this, what does it mean? Ray AB with endpoint A going in B's direction. So what does it mean when I write this without a symbol above it? Points, coordinate, we're not quite sure. Well, us mathematicians are notoriously lazy. We do not like to write things out in longhand. And so we come up with symbols to make things easier to write. And this means the distance between points A and B. So we can't just read it as AB. When we see it, we have to say it aloud as the distance between points A and B. Just as we say that this is line AB, segment AB, and ray AB. Everybody good with that? It's an easier way to say it than having to write it all out. Okay? So, if I ask you to find this, what am I asking you for? Yeah, the distance. The distance between those two points. What is the distance between D and E to the nearest millimeter? So I can ask you to measure. Okay, so I've got a, an electronic ruler here. If I'm looking for millimeters, do I want to use the top numbers or the bottom numbers? Top, why? They're the closest to millimeters, right? Because what, what are these marks? What are these big marks? Centimeters, whereas the bottom ones are inches, okay? So I'm going to move this up here so that it matches, or it, it starts at zero where D is starting. And I'm going to make this much bigger so you can actually maybe possibly see from the front row. Much bigger, huh? And it looks like E is ending where? Seventy-three, okay? Seventy-three millimeters. Does that make sense? Not 7.3, because 7.3 would be corresponding to the centimeters, right? And they're asking for 73 millimeters. Or they're asking for meter, millimeters, not centimeters. Is everybody good with that? So when you have get to the point in your book where they ask you to measure a segment, you're going to pull out a ruler. I've got some that I can loan you and measure it up, okay? All right, then the next one says, took a map from when I went to Yellowstone and found out that the distance between artist paint pots to Mary Lake this far, and I, I want to know how much further it is to Beach Lake. Well, 
how are we going to find that? We have a scale here. What does it tell you? How far is it? You could use a ruler potentially and then do a translation, right, between the miles and the, and the inches or centimeters or whatever on there. And that's what I ended up doing. I took the scale that was on the map itself and I made these little tick marks so that they matched how far that distance was. Okay? So, based on what you have on your paper, you look at your Artist Paint Pot Yellowstone map. How far is it from Artist Paint Pots to Beach Lake? Ten miles total, right? Did we make it all the way there in our first jaunt? In our first start of our hike? Nope. How far do we make it? Mary Lake. How far is Mary Lake? Is it five miles exactly? Five and a half, five and three fourths? Not quite six, right? So what are you going to estimate it being? Five and a half? Okay. So this distance from Artist Paint Pot to Mary Lake was 5.5 miles. So how much further do we have to go if we're going to get to Beach Lake? 4.5. Okay. Isn't that easy math? So don't let the sim symbolism that we use in geometry make it hard. We're just giving you a bunch of vocabulary all of a sudden that you haven't necessarily used before and getting you familiar with that. Okay? There's another example of things that you might do or talk about in your, in your assignment. So the segment addition postulate is telling you exactly what you just told me. If I know a short distance and a long distance, I can find the distance between that short distance and long distance. And likewise, if I have two, two parts to that, to that trip, I can tell you how much the whole trip was. Okay? Segment addition says that if B is between A and C, then the distance between A and B plus the distance between B and C has to add up to the distance between A and C. So the hardest part is just remembering to read it right. And if the distance between A and B plus the distance between B and C adds up to this whole distance between A and C, then B has to be between the two. Somewhere in the middle of those two points. Easy. Okay, but we have to have some place to start. That's a postulate. We're not proving it because it makes logical sense. We don't have a black hole here that eats up distances somewhere along the way. So I can ask you to plot points. Go ahead and plot those points on your foldable. P, Q, R, and S. And do me a favor, change P for me because it won't be right. This is supposed to be the point negative 4, 3. And I think it says 2 on your paper. Change that 2 to a 3. So P is the point negative 4, 3. And Q is the point 3, 3. We want to plot those points. And whenever we make a point, we, how do we show a point? By a capital letter, a dot with a capital letter. So don't forget to label them properly. Plot your points R and S. And then determine whether segment PQ is some silly symbol with segment RS. Has anyone seen that symbol before? No. Looks kind of crazy, doesn't it? So they've introduced a new symbol. Kind of looks like pi, doesn't it? It would be pi if we had this squirrely guy above. 
vertical equal signs, right? What do you think? Um, um, T, I, I only did three. Thank you. Thank you for keep, keeping me honest. One, two, three, four. There's my T. Okay. So it looks like pi, but it's not quite pi. It's a new symbol. Very good. It is congruent to. So, new word for you. Segment PQ is congruent to segment RS. Okay, so we're supposed to find out, are these guys congruent to each other? So your foldable has a page, the second page of your foldable has a whole bunch of vocabulary there we haven't talked about yet. And that's what we're going to define right now. Yep, what does congruent mean? So line segments that have the same length are called congruent segments. Okay. And the lengths or distances between their respective points are equal. We talk about lengths being equal, but segments are congruent. So in other words, if we want to know whether segment PQ is congruent to segment RS, then we have to find out is the distance between P and Q equal to the distance between R and S. And I see that Josh is shaking his head no. Why not, Josh? Good. One of them is six and one of them is seven. This is just a good old number line, isn't it? And how many steps are we from P to Q? Seven. Because if we find the absolute va value, notice the threes aren't changing, the y coordinates aren't changing, but the x's are. If we find the absolute value of negative 4 minus 3, what's the difference between those? That's negative 7. Absolute value of negative 7 is a positive 7. Distance is always positive. But now we threw a vertical number line at you, and we asked you, is what's the distance between r and s? Well, the distance between r and s, the x values are staying the same, but the y coordinates are changing. How are they changing? We're taking 4 minus a negative 2 and getting 6. So our answer here is no. The uh, segment PQ is not congruent to segment RS. Just want to show me the numbers, what numbers you got. You plotted it, you gave me some point, some values, some distances, and obviously they're not equal. But easy math, right? A whole lot easier than the algebra that you guys were doing last year. We're just talking number lines and subtraction right now. Right now. Got to get you through, through some vocabulary. But it, it stymies students because they think this, isn't, this, this should be harder. Something's wrong here. Okay, this is as hard as your questions are going to get today. But if I asked you this before you knew what this read as, you might get confused. So we're supposed to find what? The distance between x and z. We have to mentally think that's not x, z, that's the distance between x and z. So how do I find the distance between x and z? Add 7 and 26, we now have a postulate, the ruler postulate, that says that if y is between these two, and you know this distance and this distance, add them up to get the whole. So 7 plus 26. And please just write down, humor me, and write 7 plus 26 down. That way if you put 43 instead of 33 down as your answer, 
I know what you were trying to do. You just made an arithmetic error. Okay. And likewise, if I want to find this, how is it read? The distance between, yep, E and F. Okay. What do I have to do? Yeah. Subtract. 41 minus 25 is going to give me the distance between E and F, which is 16. That's as complicated as it gets today. Easy peasy. All right. Here's one last example of throwing some bigger numbers at you. I'm sure you're clicking in your boots by now. But we can ask you, okay, if the distance between Oklahoma City and St. Louis is 499.2 miles, and the distance between Oklahoma City and Springfield is only 286.2 miles air travel, right? How far would it be between Springfield and St. Louis? And how'd you get it? Subtract, yeah. Take my total distance and take away the distance between Oklahoma City and Springfield. And it e even nicely line, lined up perfectly. Your, twos, your two tenths go away. And we'll make sure we put a label here. Okay. Nothing to be afraid about. I'd like you to take page um, the first page, the one with the ruler postulate and the segment addition postulate, and I want you to glue or tape it, I've got glue sticks now, to these, uh, page 9 of your student journal, obviously not your textbook, your student journal. I'm going to put these on page 9, and the other one is going to be on page 10 of your consumable book. The postulate on page 9, the graph on page 10. And once you've got them glued or taped, you certainly may. There's your assignment for tomorrow. Make sure you write it in your planner. And this is the hardcover book, yes. This is actually your textbook. One, two through twenty-eight, even thirty-two and thirty-four. Get you guys some glue sticks, otherwise too.